Hello and welcome to Fundamentals. In this video, I present audio examples comparing how three microphones, a dynamic, a condenser, and a ribbon, sound on a variety of sources. The mic I am speaking through now is a Neumann TLM149 condenser. It has been EQ'd and compressed to make my voice sound big and sexy. The microphone examples, however, are presented dry without processing. Relative levels have been adjusted, though, to better aid comparison. All examples were recorded by Professor Josh Small's Principles of Effective Recording Lab at New England School of Communications in Bangor, Maine. The console used was an API Vision with API 212 preamps. Analog to digital conversion was through a Pro Tools HD IO interface. First, let's listen to the individual microphones. This is a Shure SM57 dynamic microphone. It is a very popular mic, especially on electric guitars and snare drums. In live sound, the microphone is used on all sorts of sound sources. For this example, I've placed a pop filter between the microphone and myself. The pop filter attenuates low-frequency plosives. Plosives occur when I pronounce B's and P's. This is a Neumann U87 condenser microphone. A studio standard since the 1960s, the U87 has been used on virtually every sound source, especially vocals. This is a Royer R121 ribbon microphone. A modern ribbon mic, the 121 is popular on many instruments, especially electric guitars. Now let's listen to the microphones back to back for better comparison. This is a Shure SM57 dynamic microphone. This is a Neumann U87 condenser microphone. This is a Royer R121 ribbon microphone. Moving from voice, let's check out the mics on flugelhorn. All three of the microphones were placed coincident that is as close together as possible in order to capture the same musical performance. First up is the Shure SM57 Dynamic. Second is the Neumann U87 Condenser. Now let's check out the Royer R121 ribbon. Moving to cymbal, let's hear the 57. Now the 87. And the ribbon. Let's listen to the three mics on snare drum. Again, all mics are as close together as possible. We'll start with the 57 dynamic. The 87 condenser. The 121 ribbon. Now, on acoustic guitar, here's the dynamic. The condenser. The ribbon. Our last example is electric guitar. First the 57. Now the U87. And the R121. So, what can we glean from these microphone examples? For one thing, it is interesting how a microphone can sound great on one source, yet not so impressive on another. Take the Royer R121 ribbon. In the voice, cymbal, and acoustic guitar examples, the mic is quite dark. Not bad sounding, but too muffled for use when high frequency clarity is required. In some of the other examples, the microphone sounds great. On the trumpet electric guitar, the ribbon is creamy, thick, and flattering. Another lesson to be learned is that stereotypes are not necessarily factual. I expected the $100 SM57 Dynamic to be darker and less fancy sounding than the $3,000 U87 condenser. I couldn't have been more wrong. The 57 and 87 are strikingly similar on almost every source. Yes, the 87 is a tad brighter, 
especially in the symbol and snare examples, but it sounds nothing like the cliché condenser I imagine in my head. I am now left wondering, is my condenser stereotype too narrow, or is the 87 just reserved in its high-end presence? To answer that question, I must return to the studio for more study. Achieving microphone enlightenment requires continual listening, comparison, and experimentation.